Welcome to this video on Thevenin's theorem. In this video, we continue to look at slightly more advanced examples of Thevenin's theorem. Um, if you haven't watched our introductory videos on Thevenin's theorem and some of the more simple examples, I suggest going back to those first of all before watching this video. Uh, but we're going to apply the same principles in this video to this circuit here. And you'll notice first of all, if you've watched our previous videos, that in this particular example we have something slightly different in the fact that we have two uh, power supplies, two DC voltage sources in this circuit compared to other examples where we just have one. And so what we're going to do in this circuit is we're going to apply the superposition principle which we've also looked at previously to this question uh, involving Thevenin's theorem as well. And the intention is exactly the same as our other examples. We want to simplify this circuit uh, down to a Thevenin equivalent circuit, which consists of just one uh, voltage and one resistance, the Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance. And so we're going to have to do a couple of extra things in this particular video in order to do that, that involve the superposition principle. So first of all, we have two voltage sources in this circuit, but what we're actually going to do is we're going to use the superposition principle to take just one of those voltage sources at a time. And let's say we take this left voltage source into consideration. We're going to actually ignore the right hand voltage there, the 15 volts. And then we'll do the opposite. We'll take the 15 volts into consideration and we'll ignore the 20 volts. Let's illustrate what we mean by this. So let's start with the left hand 20 volt power supply. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to remove the 15 volt power supply from this circuit. So I'm going to erase that and I'm going to replace it with a short circuit in this case. So that um, SC for short circuit there. And we've now removed the right hand voltage from our circuit. And what I'm going to do is just uh, carry out Thevenin's theorem uh, just as just as I would have done previously to calculate the voltage across the open terminals at the end here This is the intention to calculate these vo uh, the voltage across these terminals And we're going to do this just by having the one power supply in the circuit So first of all We know that we calculate the voltage across the terminals by using the potential divider rule and In this case we need to look at the circuit to determine which of our resistors of which we have three are in the potential divider. It might be some of them, it might be all of them. Uh, but in this case, we need to look at where the current is flowing in this circuit. We have a current loop around these two resistors here, 470 and 330, uh, which come back to the power supply again. The 220 ohm resistor is on this arm of the circuit, which leads to this open terminal. Now, if this is an open terminal, it means that current isn't flowing along here. It isn't th flowing through this 220 ohm resistor. And if there's no current, then Ohm's law, there's no voltage. So when it comes to potential dividers, calculating voltages, this 220 ohm resistor isn't in play. We can ignore it for the purpose of this example. And so what we have is these two resistors here, which are in our potential divider. And of the two, we're measuring across the 330. You can see that if we're ignoring this 220 ohm resistor, it, the, the open terminals, we can think of them as being measuring across the 330 ohms there. And so what we have here is the simple potential divider rule. Uh, and we'd, we'd, uh, we'd write it like this. We'd have uh, VTH, the Thevenin voltage. But what I'm gonna do in this case is just mark it with a little dash there just to um, distinguish between the left-hand and right-hand voltages that we're going to calculate in this example. We're just doing the left-hand uh, voltage here, first of all, which is creating a Thevenin voltage across these terminals. We have to repeat this exercise for the right-hand uh, right voltage in just a second, but I'm just going to call that VTH with a dash now to keep those separate. Anyway, we said that the open terminals there are measuring across the 330 or we can we can kind of visualize that and we have these two resistors in our potential divider 
So we would set that up in our equation by saying the Thevenin voltage is equal to the supply voltage, which is 20, multiplied by a fraction, and we would put 330 on the top, that's the resistor that we're measuring across, 330 plus 470 on the bottom. And if I calculate that, I come up with an, ex uh, with an answer of 8.25 volts. Let's now repeat this for the other power supply. If you remember, I removed one of the power supplies and kept this one in. I'm gonna do the opposite now. So what I'm gonna do is I'll get rid of that short circuit and I'll replace that, uh, that power supply that I removed before. It was a 15 volt power supply. So I'll mark that back in there. And what we're instead gonna do is remove this uh, power supply from the left-hand side. We'll get rid of that, and just as before, we'll replace it with a short circuit, SC. So now we're gonna do the same. We're gonna calculate what I'll call VTH with a double dash. And we're gonna calculate another open circuit voltage, again, across the terminals here. What we said before about this 220 ohm resistor still applies. It's an open circuit. There's no current uh, through this resistor here, and so there's no voltage across it. So we can ignore this potential um, or this resistor when it comes to the potential divider rule. Now, what we're seeing here is 15 volts measured across, or sorry, separated between two impedances. It's the same two impedances that are in our current loop. The easiest way to visualize this is to imagine that we flip these two circuit branches round. Because we're now, remembering we're ignoring this 220 ohm resistor here, we're actually measuring across the 470, or we can think of it that way. We, we have no sort of impedance between the open terminal and the 470. So we can think of ourselves as measuring across the 470 ohm resistor. Or if it helps, uh, visualizing swapping these two circuit branches around so that the 15, and 15 volts and the 330 ohms are on the left-hand side and the 470 is on the right-hand side. It doesn't change the behavior of the circuit at all, but it makes it slightly easier to visualize. And so now it's actually the 470 that we're measuring across. The 470 and the 330 are still in our current loop. You can see there's a there's a closed current loop uh, around uh, around here where these two uh, impedances are. And so what we have is essentially the opposite where we have our power supply, which is in this case 15 volts, multiplied by a fraction. And now we have the 470 on the top. And we have the same 470 plus 330 added together on the bottom. And if we calculate that, we come out with a result of 8.81 volts. So finally, remembering that we've cheated in a way, we've, we've removed one, pow uh, one power supply and then we've removed the other, we need to go back to the original circuit because there's actually two power supplies, of course, in this circuit. So I'll put back in our 20 volt power supply, which was there. And that just means that our total Thevenin resistance must be the result of one power supply added to the result of the other. So our total Thevenin resistance, without any dashes now, is 8.25 plus 8.81. And that comes out as a result of 17.06 volts. That's our Thevenin voltage. Finally, we need to also calculate the Thevenin resistance in this circuit. And Thevenin resistance is calculated by finding the resistance from one terminal all the way through the circuit to the other terminal. And we do that while removing or short circuiting any power supplies. And so in this case, we're actually gonna short circuit both power supplies at the same time. We're gonna remove both of them from our circuit there. They're both replaced with short circuits uh, like so. And we have to calculate now 
the total resistance from one terminal to the other. So first of all, hopefully we can see that this arrangement is one series resistor followed by two parallel resistors. Our path splits after the 220 ohms. We can go through either the 330 or the 470 to the other terminal there. And so our result is going to look something like this. We have our Thevenin resistance equal to 220 plus 330 in parallel with 470. I've used my notation there, the double slash, uh, as a shorthand for parallel resistors. If you're not sure how to calculate parallel resistors, it's worth visiting our video where we cover that. But we'll skip that in this example. Uh, that comes out as, an, as, a, as a total result of 413.88 ohms. So our final point is to say that our circuit here can be simplified um, down to a Thevenin equivalent circuit. And that circuit would look something like this. If I remove uh, our original circuit, uh, we'll get rid of that. And we'll instead just replace it with our equivalent circuit, which looks something like this. We have one uh, Thevenin voltage, uh, so one DC voltage supply, and we have one Thevenin resistance, like so. And that leads us to our open circuit terminals there. So we have our Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance. And we can mark on some circuit values as well. We can say that our Thevenin voltage came to 17.06 volts. And our Thevenin resistance came to 413.88 ohms. And the idea being that those two circuits are equivalent at the output terminals. So I hope that you found this example of Thevenin's theorem useful when it comes to circuits that have more than one power supply. We can use the superposition principle to address one power supply at a time and gradually pick up a, uh, build up a picture of what the total Thevenin equivalent circuit looks like.